Welcome to the second lesson in my Intermediate English series. Today we're going to learn vocabulary, grammar and pronunciation on the topic of food, cooking and eating out. Don't forget to stick around to the end because I'm going to give you a quiz on what you've learned today. What's your favorite food? That's such a hard question because I love food, all types of food. I can't just pick one. Okay, let me narrow that down. What's your favorite style or type of food? Italian, Asian, that type of thing. All right, if I were to pick one type of cuisine, it would be Asian food. I know that's a broad category, but I love spicy food. So I would say all types of Asian food, like Thai, Vietnamese, Japanese, Singaporean. Are you allergic or intolerant to anything? No, fortunately I'm not allergic to anything. But I find if I eat too much bread, uh, I don't feel great. So I try to avoid eating too much bread. My husband, however, is lactose intolerant. So he avoids milk products altogether. He can't drink milk without getting an upset stomach. Is there a food that you've never eaten that you'd really like to eat? Hmm, good question. I would have to say African food. I don't think I've ever had African food from Central or Southern Africa. Or Russian food, perhaps? I've heard they make a great soup. Is there any food that you hate? I can't say there's anything that I hate. Mm, there are dishes that I hate, but not specific cuisines. But maybe in general, German food? I don't hate it, but I could take it or leave it. Do you like to cook or do you prefer takeaway? I prefer cooking, definitely. When I have time, there's nothing better than spending time in the kitchen. I don't often get takeaway and I don't eat out a lot. So when I do eat out, when I go out, I want to eat something special. Something that I wouldn't be able to cook at home. If you were stuck on a desert island, what two foods would you bring? Only two foods? I think I would have to go with good bread and good cheese. You can't go wrong with a fresh baguette and some butter and cheese to go with it. It's basic and perhaps not that nutritious, but it's safe enough and tasty. When you're away from home, what food do you miss the most? Well, I've had three homes in my life so far. Australia, Ireland and France. So I'm going to tell you what I would miss from those three places. From Ireland, I miss the tea. So I bring Irish tea with me wherever I go. And from Australia, it's not a specific type of food. It's the coffee. They make great coffee there. And from France, I have to say the pastries and the cakes. Nobody does it better than the French. What time do you have breakfast? On weekdays, I normally have breakfast around 7.30 a.m. But on weekends, I sleep in, so it's generally a bit later. And what do you have for breakfast? I have cereal, like muesli with milk, a glass of water, maybe a juice. But sometimes I go for a run before breakfast because if I try to run on a full stomach, uh, I feel a bit queasy. And what do you have for dinner? I normally eat light at dinner time because I don't like to go to bed on a full stomach. So I avoid big meaty dishes in the evening. Sometimes it's unavoidable. And I'm also trying to cut down on desserts. Now I'm going to pick some nice phrases from that conversation and I want you to repeat them after me. Wherever there's a space, I want you to put in your choice of word. If I were to pick one type of food, it would be... I love spicy food. Fortunately, I'm not allergic to anything. My husband, however, is lactose intolerant.
I would have to say African food. I can't say there's anything that I hate. I could take it or leave it. I don't often get takeaway. I don't eat out a lot. There's nothing better than spending time in the kitchen. I think I would have to go with fresh bread and cheese. It's not that nutritious. What I would miss the most are the pastries and cakes. Nobody does it better than the French. I normally have breakfast around 7.30. I feel a bit queasy. I normally eat light at dinner time. I don't like to go to bed on a full stomach. I avoid eating meaty dishes in the evening. I'm trying to cut down on desserts. Now let's look at food vocabulary. Try to remember these because I'm going to quiz you on them later. Seafood. Crab. Lobster. Mussels. Tuna, salmon, squid, pork, ham, beef, lamb, veal, venison, duck, chicken, vegetables and fruit, aubergine or eggplant, green beans, Zucchini or courgette, avocado, cucumber, cabbage, cauliflower, pepper, lettuce, lemon, pear, orange, grape, peach. Methods of cooking, baking, grilling. Boiling, steaming, frying, roasting. In today's grammar lesson, we're going to look at the present simple and present continuous and action and non-action verbs. Do you remember this? I don't often get takeaway and I don't eat out a lot. So when I do eat out, when I go out, I want to eat something special. We use present simple for things that are true and things that happen regularly. I normally have breakfast around 7.30. We use adverbs of frequency with the present simple. Like always, usually, sometimes, never, generally. These are all adverbs of frequency. And we also use expressions of frequency like once a month, twice a year. How often do you eat out? I eat out twice a month. How many times a week do you get a takeaway? I rarely get takeaway. Maybe once a month? We use the present continuous to talk about actions that are in progress while we are speaking. The water is boiling. Can you take it off the stove? Or things that are happening around now. The price of food is skyrocketing. I'm cooking a lot at the moment. And remember, we don't use the present continuous to talk about things that happen regularly. We use the present simple for that. So, for example, we would say, I have dinner at 8 p.m. every evening. Not, I am having dinner at 8 p.m. every evening. And do you know that there are verbs that we don't normally use with the present continuous? These are called non-action verbs 
or sometimes they're called state or stative verbs. They are verbs which describe states or feelings, not actions. What are you cooking? It smells amazing. I'm making a curry. Oh, great. I love curry. Common non-action verbs are agree, be, believe, belong, depend, forget, hate, hear, know, like, love, matter, mean, need, prefer, realize, recognize, remember, seem, suppose, and want. And of course, the verbs of the senses, like smell, taste, look, and sound. This bill seems very expensive to me. Do we need to go shopping today? However, some verbs can be action and non-action. I know, it gets complicated sometimes. But two common verbs that can be both are the verb have and the verb to think. I have a cat is non-action because it's a possessive. I having doesn't require an action. However, I am having a great day is an action verb. We can use it in the present continuous. I am having a great day. It's more of an action verb in that sentence. I often think about my past. This is considered non-action, just to think. However, if you use think as in consider, it requires more of a mental process, I think. For example, I'm thinking of moving house. You could almost see your brain working. <laughs> so when you use think in terms of consider, then we can use it in the present continuous. So that's the end of our lesson today. A lot to take in, a lot of vocabulary and grammar. Try the quiz at the end. If you don't get everything right, it's okay. Watch the video again or try and learn the non-action verbs, which is probably what's going to get you the most in this lesson and make your own sentences using these non-action verbs. If you want, you can actually answer all of the questions I asked in the conversation yourself in the comments below.